Today, I decided to give you an update on my stock and ETF portfolio, which right now lies at around $250,000. A year ago, I already published a portfolio reveal, which is, come here, this one. And if you've seen it, back then I had a lot of stocks, way too many stocks, around 40 different positions. I know you don't need so many stocks, and that's why last year I said that my goal was to reach at least 80% ETFs and 20% stocks by the end of 2023. And that's exactly what I did. So if you're ready, I'm ready, let's start sifting through the position of my portfolio and let's get the video started. What's up everyone, Rick here, your ETF investor, and if you catch my instruction to win the $150 giveaway in my last video last Friday, you know what you have to do in the comments here to win them. If you missed my video last week, don't worry, you can just watch this video first and then go back to the one from last week to find out what you have to do. But now, let's get right to my portfolio. As you know, I'm an Excel freak, so of course, I track every detail and stat of my portfolio movements in a Google file that I created. So before jumping straight to the single positions, let me show you a couple of interesting graphs from the dashboard. Let's start from this beautiful breakdown of ETFs and stocks. As of today, I have 82.5% in ETFs and 17.5% in stocks. Just by comparison, this is how my balance breakdown looked like around a year ago. 38.5% in stocks and 61.5% in ETFs. Back then, don't get me wrong, I already knew that I didn't want to expose myself too much to the risk of individual stocks. But the reason why I had this portfolio was one, that I had most of my stocks already since around two or three years, from a time in which I was more of a stock picker, and two, that during the stock market crisis of 2022, I bought more stocks because they were discounted. But when the economy recovers, I usually tend to invest more safely using ETFs. Regardless of what you're going to see today, because I still have some stocks as you can see, my suggestion for new investors is always to stick to ETFs for most part of the portfolio, because you're just going to have the biggest diversification and the lowest risk at the lowest price. Yeah, I like ETFs. So coming down to the sector breakdown of my portfolio, this shows you how much I'm investing in sectors within the individual stocks. I don't have so many stocks now. As I said, it's just about 17.5% of my portfolio and they are almost equally distributed within three sectors, information technology, communication, and consumer discretionary. Last year, I had a lot of single stocks. I was covering almost all sectors, but now I have more ETFs. So they basically take care of diversification for me. I love ETFs. Now the last graph I want to show you before starting with the positions is an overview of the performance of the single stocks and ETFs of my portfolio. I can only tell you that ETFs and stocks are both a long-term play. If you choose well, you might be unlucky maybe the first year or the first two years and the price goes down, but if you're patient enough, after that, you're going to have a pretty sweet positive return in almost all you own. It's just a question of patience and of course, you have to do your homework. And doing your homework also means subscribing to this channel because you don't have to make all the mistakes I made in my past. So you can learn from my mistakes, learn from our community, and hopefully you can also have some fun listening to my broken English. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Peppers. Peppers, pipers, picker, ah. Uh, okay. All right, let's go to the most important part of the video, which is the substance, the position of my portfolio. I'm gonna move up from the stocks or ETFs with the smallest weight in my portfolio up to the ones with the highest weight. I have a total of 19 positions between ETFs and stocks, so I know it's a lot and I always suggest having a much simpler portfolio than this. In fact, my goal is to reduce it to 15 positions or less by the end of this year. But before starting with the list, consider that I'm not a financial advisor. So whatever I say, you have the right to comment, you know nothing, Jon Snow, because everything I know about finance is self-taught through books and experience. But again, nothing wrong with subscribing to the channel, which instead is a great thing to do because you get free videos every week from the Italian twin of Manu Ginobili. All right, my first position takes 0.8% of my portfolio, around $2,000, and is an ETF that covers small cap called iShares MSCI World Small Cap ETF. This is a European ETF. If you invest from the US instead and want to invest in small cap, I suggest you go for something like an S&P 600 ETF like VIOO. 
the Vanguard S&P Small Cap 600 ETF that with 0.1% expense ratio gives you access to the most famous index for small cap stocks. Now, why do I own small cap? I don't know. No, I'm kidding. Of course I know and the reason is that I want to be able to monitor how small cap performs relatively to large cap. And because in the long term, small cap has been proven to give a better return than large cap as reported in the research from S&P Global. Now, if you compare the long-term results of VO, which is the S&P 500 covering large cap, and VTI, which also covers mid and small cap together with large cap, they didn't actually perform much differently from one another. So the truth is, you can also live without small cap. But since I'm a curious person, I want to have it in my portfolio and see how it develops in 10 or 15 years. Moving up the ladder, my second position takes 0.9% of my portfolio around $2,100, and it's CrowdStrike Holdings, ticker CRWD. Now, let me make it clear. The only mistake I made with this stock is that I didn't buy enough. So far, it's given me 170% return, and just two, three weeks ago, it has been added to the S&P 500 index because of its incredible results. The company grew with an extreme pace all along. The revenue went from 53 million in 2017 to over 3 billion dollars in 2024. And the company is finally getting also a positive net income. The free cash flow is positive since 2020 and is growing at a constant pace, which is always a sign of a solid growth company with a good management. But let me ruin the dream now. I'm going to sell this position very soon because Despite the financial growth, the company has risen to the highest revenue multiple of any public software company above $75 billion market cap. And that is not a good sign. Maybe we'll keep growing, probably will if I sell, but I don't want to take the risk. Going further up, we have BYD, a Chinese electrical vehicle manufacturer, which is by far the most successful Chinese manufacturers of electric cars and is also a company that Buffett and Munger always invested in. BYD weights 1.1% in my portfolio with around $2,700 and unfortunately, I'm not really winning with it. Fun fact, or sad fact, in my own portfolio reveal video last year, I had said that I was expecting the price to decrease. And in fact, that's what happened. The next one is an ETF that covers the Asia market. In Europe, it's called iShares MSCI EM Asia UCITS ETF USD. In the US, there is a version that is not identical, but almost. It is the iShares MSCI Emerging Markets Asia ETF, ticker EEMA. For this, the US ETF, unfortunately, has a quite high expense ratio of 0.49%, while the European ETF 0.20%. It has 624 companies, over 2.4 billion in assets under management, and the country exposure covers all Asia with an overweight in China with 26%, followed by Taiwan, India, and South Korea. The next company is Salesforce, ticker CRM, that probably most of you know. I'm at plus 53% gain here, and I have around $3,000 in it. Salesforce is a cloud-based software company from the US focus on sales, automation, and e-commerce. In the last 12 months, it gave 23.52%, although year to date, as you can see here, we didn't really grow. And also in the last five years, despite a total growth of 69.32%, you can see that since 2020, there hasn't been any growth. If we see instead the financials of the company, since 2020, the revenue doubled, the operating profit grew 13 times, and the free cash flow, check it out, it's in cost and growth. Then I have Meta with around 1.5% and 148.5% gain. This looks great, but in reality, Meta hides my biggest mistake because of course, dumb as I am, I sold most of it in 2022. If instead I had bought Meta during the crisis in 2022, right now I would have enjoyed a growth of around, hear me out, 500%. Ah, <sighs> well, whatever. Let's go to the next. Tesla, great company, no need for introduction. I have almost $4,000 in it, and I bought it not for the electrical vehicles, but for the future value of the data that Tesla constantly collects. And also because I believe they are going to be one of the leading robots manufacturers in the world. The next is an ETF, and in particular, a world ETF from Europe that contains all world countries, developed and emerging. If you come from Europe, 
Remember that there are two main indexes that World ETFs track, the MSCI World Index and the FTSC All World Index. MSCI tracks only developed countries like US, European countries and so on, while the FTSC Index also includes emerging markets like China and India, which have a great potential for the future. My next and last four individual stocks are gonna be Microsoft, Alphabet, Apple, and Amazon. Microsoft grew 38% in the last 12 months, Alphabet 58%, Apple 16%, and Amazon 54%. When in this column in green, you see my total return since buy. Now, these four companies together with some others like Meta or Tesla are the kinds of companies that I'm always gonna buy every time there is a crash. I usually invest in ETFs only during good times, but during a crash, tech companies tend to experience a strong hit and it becomes a great moment to buy them at a discount. My next position is an ETF based on India that grew 88% since when I bought it and 37.55% in the last 12 months. I bought it because I wanted to have some individual exposure to the Indian market. Nevertheless, I don't intend to buy more in the future because I want to simplify my portfolio as much as possible in the future. The next ETF is the S&P 500 of the consumer discretionary sector. If you invest in the US, I suggest you use the Vanguard Consumer Discretionary ETF with ticker VCR. If instead you invest in Europe, you can buy the iShares S&P 500 Consumer Discretionary ETF with ticker QDVK. They are basically identical except for some differences in percentages. And with these, you're gonna get over 300 companies such as Amazon, Tesla, Home Depot, McDonald's, Booking. And the expense ratio is 0.1% for the American ETF and 0.15% for the European ETF. The next two ETFs are two growth ETFs, namely EQQQ, which is the European version of QQQ, and QDVE, which is a pure information technology ETF. Now, QQQ, as most of you know, is by far the best growth ETF in existence. And with it, I have a total return of 54%, while the ETF itself gave 34.73% in the last 12 months. With the information technology ETF instead, I could profit from one of the greatest growth of the last 10 years. In fact, only in the last 12 months, it grew 48%. If you invest from the US, I suggest the Vanguard Information Technology ETF with ticker VGT. All right, before showing you position number three, let me move quickly to number two, which is a world ETF called iShares Core MSCI World ETF. First and foremost, if you invest from the US, you can buy the Vanguard Total World Stock ETF with ticker VT. In Europe, instead you have two main indexes for world ETFs. One is the FTSC and one is the MSCI. The MSCI is by far the most bought in the world and specifically this ETF here is the biggest ETF in Europe among over 2,600 ETFs available with over 83 billions in assets under management. A world ETF is basically your safety net if you don't want to be invested completely in the American stock market. As far as I have experienced, there are two lines of thinking. People that are totally invested in the US and people that think that in the long term, the US won't be as strong anymore and diversify worldwide. Honestly, I have my personal opinion, but the truth is that whatever happens, it's not gonna happen within a couple of years. So I'm still investing mostly in the US, but trying to cover some bases in other developing countries too. Now we finally got to the third and first position, which I kept together for the end because they're just two different ETFs of the same index, the S&P 500. And let me be clear, you usually don't need two equal ETFs. If you invest in the US, in fact, I suggest you just buy one like VOO, the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, or SPY, the SPDR S&P 500 ETF. I have two because my number one, the Vanguard ETF, uses a full replication approach. Namely, if you buy it, you're actually owning the companies inside it. My number three instead is the Invesco S&P 500 ETF, which instead is a synthetic ETF. This means that Invesco here doesn't actually buy the companies inside the index, but instead uses other methods to emulate the performance of the index. This gives a tax advantage because they don't need to buy and sell companies, translating it to a slightly better performance. Honestly, I invested in both because I wanted to cover both bases, but the truth is, I could have just sticked with a Vanguard and I would have had almost the same results. Now, as you can see, the S&P 500 between the Vanguard ETF and the Invesco ETF covers almost 50% of my portfolio. 
And if you consider that also a world ETF like my number two has over 60% in the US, you can see that I do give a lot of trust to the American stock market. Now, the portfolio might look complicated and honestly, I will keep reducing the positions in the future. But in reality, as I showed to you, most of my net worth is focused on general ETFs and only a small part in individual companies. All right, this was the overview of my portfolio. If you missed the giveaway instructions in the last video, you can get back to it and I will also link the video in the description below. There I will tell you what you have to do to potentially win $150 for free that I will send directly to you. So if you missed it, check it out now and don't miss the opportunity. Drop a like to this video to support my work and the most important thing, subscribe to the channel and click the ring bell to get new videos about finance and investing every week from the twin of Mano Ginobili. I wish you a great day, everyone. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.